Welcome to Policing TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Suffolk Police and Crime Commissioner Tim Passmore. Now, let's let's turn to national matters. Those matters that are largely local, local to Suffolk, hopefully we'll pick up in more detail in the coming months. Mm. Um, on national matters, <clears throat> uh, the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners uh, of uh, the body of whom you're a, a member. The, it's constant, uh, it, its um, membership has changed quite markedly with these elections. Many new police and crime commissioners, uh, the political hue of that group uh, somewhat changed as well. Um, tell us, uh, please, first about the portfolio that you have been leading um, for the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners and uh, as the APCC will uh, be re-examining how those portfolios are allotted, uh, whether you have an interest in maintaining that portfolio or indeed picking up uh, with further portfolios. Hmm. Uh, very good question. Um, two or three things to comment on here, Bernard. Um, I've been um, the joint leader of the uh, environment portfolio. And I do that with Joy Allen, who's the PCC for Durham. We get on very well. We might have different political views. But I think one great thing yes, about I think the APCC... I, I'm just going to point out, I'm just going to point out there for those not uh, knowledgeable in these matters, uh, you uh, uh, wear a blue conservative rosette and yes. Joy wears a red Labour rosette. So you work together, despite your political differences, uh, in a constructive manner. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's one of the great things about the APCC. Very rarely over my 12 or well, nearly 12 years experience of being involved with the APCC after its rather uh, very difficult gestation period and birth going back all those years, as you will know. I actually think, you know, on the whole, we all get on very well together and there's very rarely a an artificial political divide just because you happen to be of a different colour. And I think that's very creditable. My view is the public actually appreciate that. Many, of course, don't know about the APCC, but they do expect it, people elected in whatever position you're in to work together for the, the greater good. And that's not meant to sound pompous. I think we genuinely do that. For me, yes, I've got a blue badge, but I've made it absolutely clear, um, whilst you have various views that are conservative, um, nevertheless, putting the interest of Suffolk first has always been the top of my priority. I'm born and bred Suffolk, and uh, if it's inconvenient for people in the Home Office of London, I actually don't really care because you're there to elect and represent everybody in Suffolk. And we work together. So that's been, I think, a very big credit to the uh, APCC of the way that we've all worked together. Um, and that's that's to everybody's advantage. You, you and Joy then have worked together on the environment port portfolio. You were about yes. to tell us about that. I interrupted. So please carry on on that. No, 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 no not at all. Um, what I was seeking to do here, and it, again, is in part of our police and crime plan, rather than have a zealot-like approach to climate change, and I'm not a climate change denier, uh, that things have changed, but I think we also have to recognise that um, going gung-ho with electrification may well be fine for vehicles and so on in urban areas, but in a remote area like Suffolk, it just doesn't work at the moment. So we need a pragmatic approach. I've always coined the phrase, of, and it's a bit of a mouthful, better use of scarce natural resources making these changes costs money so we need the resource to do it again coming back to an economic uh, justification there are many things that can help for example putting the solar panels on roofs etc um looking at it, we've well we did live in the driest part of the country although you wouldn't think so after the last year but water resources are important dealing with waste are we uh, and recycling all of these things may be relatively low key but they are very very important so looking after the environment is crucial but it needs to be a pragmatic approach to that i personally think when it comes to vehicle propulsion we should be looking far more at hydrogen propulsion jcb british invention their factory for the internal combustion engine uh, up in um, i think it's up in northern ireland very interesting proposal i believe um the belgian police force has actually decided a lot of their vehicles will be powered by hydrogen now, we need to look at these things and work it out to make sure that we've got the resilience for blue light response. We can't afford to be waiting around for vehicles to be charged, etc. A lot of work is being done on that, and I hope I will bring a practical um, disposition towards this before we make the final decision. We're probably going to end up, I suspect, with having some electric vehicles, some hydrogen hybrid, etc. 
Um, looking at our estate, of course, how do you reduce environmental impact on there? There's always this debate, do you refurbish old buildings? Do you knock them down? Do you move elsewhere? And again, we need proper toolkits, data, evidence in order to make the decisions. That's not avoiding the issue. We need to make the decisions. It's got to be affordable and so on. So it's complicated, but I am an enthusiast for it. So, so Tim, what I'm picking up in, in that is an enthusiasm to continue uh, in your leading role on the uh, yes. EPCC uh, environment uh, portfolio. Uh, and uh, just aware of time, we need to bring things to a close very shortly. Can I just check uh, any ambition to take on further portfolios or uh, are you content, ideally, to hang on to that, uh, that, that uh, environment portfolio? Well, I, I think I think Bernard, that would be enough that that one because the other area I am very involved in is I have the privilege of chairing the National Rural Crime Network, which is a body made up of many of our PCCs, but also it has representatives of the um, National Farmers Union, the Countryside, um, the Country Land and Business Association, Countryside Alliance, and um, the local the rural services network from local government. And I do think um, rural areas need looking after far better because of the way the pattern of crime has changed. The old chestnut of getting this funding formula sorted to give a fairer share for rural areas, bearing in mind so much more crime is now carried out online. has got nothing to do with whether you're urban or, or, or rural. Uh, and I'm still getting pretty impatient and fed up with the Home Office and the prevarication of delivering this revision because it needs to be done and a better settlement for rural areas. I'm not looking for equality is important. And I think having a role there within the National Rural Crime Network and all the other issues like fly tipping, plant machinery theft, um, working with NAVSIS, the National Vehicle Crime Intelligence Service here in Suffolk, we've got the Port of Phoenix, so the largest container port in the country, um, dealing with organised crime. The recent report that's just been published, fascinating read. We've got 10 asks of government for their and I would like to be in the position to carry on with that. So focusing on those two areas, as well as what you're doing back at the ranch here in Suffolk, for me, that, that's more than enough. And um, I'll be very happy to continue in that vein. Tim, thank you very much indeed. We've, we're, we need to draw things to, for, to a close. But let me just, in closing, take this opportunity to wish you, uh, your office, uh, the force, and indeed those you work with, both across uh, Suffolk and indeed more wine, widely, every success in delivering in your fourth term uh, for the people of Suffolk. So uh, for the time being, um, Suffolk Police and Crime Commissioner Tim Passmore, thank you very much indeed. Bernard, thank you very much.